Hello, my fellow mathletes, and welcome back. We are continuing our look at the 2018 Pascal paper with question 23. We are midway through the hard questions, the part C questions. In the diagram, two larger circles with radius 1 have centers P and Q. Also, the smaller circle has diameter PQ. The region inside the two larger circles, but outside the smaller circle, is shaded. I'm not going to bet. We're going to have to figure out the area of the shaded region. The area of the shaded region is closest to, so I am immediately reaching for my calculator. I've got mine handy, and this is exactly the situation where you really want yours handy. Sometimes we can approximate by saying, well, pi is about 3.14, and, and root 2 is about 1.414. But you really want your calculator, so you're not wasting a whole lot of time. Uh, other times, you know, I find just using some mental arithmetic can often save the day and save me pressing buttons. But this is exactly why you want to bring your calculator to the contest. Okay, so how can we figure out this shaded region? Well, it's a good th uh, idea to break the region down into smaller areas that I might be able to calculate. So as I draw my picture, I notice the similarities with Venn diagrams. Now one circle here is obviously bigger than the other, but it doesn't matter as long as I understand they're supposed to be the same. If I could figure out this shaded area in blue and then subtract off the circle with diameter PQ, what would be left over is my shaded area. So I've got a plan of attack here. The question is, well, what can I do? How can I figure out the overlap area. So we'll draw a smaller, perhaps more exact picture here. Okay, so I know P and Q are the centers uh, of these circles, which means, oh, uh, so that's nifty. Uh, Q lies on the circumference of P, uh, of the circle of P, and, and P lies on the circumference of the circle centered at Q, so draw an even better picture here well better picture you know what new new page I just I just want to I just want to draw a good circle that nearly worked I probably shouldn't be wasting so much time you certainly should never waste so much time trying to draw a perfect circle because honestly these aren't perfect circles but the point is I can immediately tell that the radius of the, uh, uh, of the, sorry, the diameter, the length PQ must be 1 because it's a radius of the big circles. So that's nice. So that really quickly gets me the area of that uh, red circle there. So the red circle with PQ has a diameter of 1, therefore a radius of 1 half, and the area of that is pi r squared. Well, that's pi 1 half squared, or pi by 4. All right, fine. But what about the big blue area that I wanted to find? Okay, how can I figure that out? Well, um, so I, I would probably split this in half and connect our centers up to, to the sides there. So what this does is make me want a bigger picture. Isn't that always the way? Because I'm really just trying to explain it. So here to the center to here. So at this point, I sort of have sectioned off this green sector of the uh, circle that's centered at P. Now, I don't want all that because, well, I've, I've got some bits left out over here, but I want to do the same thing uh, to, to P. So what I want to do is I want to cut it off, divide it right in the middle, and then get this area which is going to be the sector of the circle minus this triangle over here. So we want to do circle sector minus the triangle. And that should be exactly this. I think it's called a lune. L-U-N-E. I think French for moon. But then if I double that, I get the whole area uh, overlap between the big circles. And then I can just subtract off pi by 4. So how can I figure out the area of this loon? Well, again, if we take a look with the P's and Q's, 
The length PQ is 1, but the lengths up to these common points on both circles, well, they'll also, if you just connect their centers up, be length 1, because they're also radii. So I get a bunch of equilateral triangles. What does that tell me? Well, in here I get a 60, in here I get a 60. So the big arc of my loon and of my triangle is going to be, I wrote 150, I meant 120. So I need a, uh, a sector of 120 degrees, then subtract off two halves of the same equilateral triangle, which is just the area of an equilateral triangle. Or I guess I could say this is a height of one half, and then I need the heights of the equilateral triangles. Uh, but then that would get me the loon, double it, subtract off pi by 4. So we have a strategy. So the uh, sector... has an area of 120 degrees over 360 degrees times pi times the radius, which is 1 for the big circles, squared. Minus, now here we go, so we're going to have a height of 1 half, so minus triangle. Height of 1 half, and then, well, what's the, uh, the base here, this length here? You could use the cosine law if you knew it, but it's a grade 9 contest, so we're not going to do that. Uh, what I would recommend you do is use the fact that this guy is part of... Either you could say he's two halves of, a right, of, uh, of the same equilateral triangle, so this area is the same as this area, and when added together with this area forms uh, an equilateral triangle. Uh, if you knew a formula for the area of an equilateral triangle, that would be fantastic. If not, you could say, well, this is 30, this is 60, so these guys are 30, 60, 90 triangles. So if I know that one side is one half, the hypotenuse is one, then we know that this is root 3 over 2 in here. And so doubling that is root 3 here. So that's another way to view it. Either way, you're going to get one half base times height, or root 3 over 4. And so that's uh, equal to my loon. So that's what? Uh, pi by 3 minus root 3 over 4. So now I just want to double that. So 2 times pi by 3 uh, minus, 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 minus root 3 over 4. And then we want to subtract off that circle inside. So subtract off pi by 4. So we're going to get 2 pi by 3 minus a pi by 4 minus root 3 over 2. Uh, we can simplify this, get a 12 down here and a 8 up here. A 12 down here and a 3 up here. So 5 pi by 12 minus root 3 over 2 is our final answer. Except they asked us to round it off, so now I'm going to use my calculator. So 5 times pi, thanks to the pi button on the calculator, divided by 12 is about 1.3089. And then root 3 divided by 2 is about 0 0.866025. So that's subtracting one from the other. Gets me 0 0.4429, approximately. So we're looking for, I think I saw two decimal places, so we're looking for 44. And that's there at the end, so E is going to be our answer. Uh, a, certainly I wasted a fair bit of time trying to draw these circle pictures nice and neat. I don't like drawing circles. Uh, but, yeah, we just had to break it down. It took a little longer than I actually expected for, for a breakdown, but uh, there we go. 
And we certainly had to use those 30, 60, 90 triangles, which you might not be comfortable with, especially if you don't know trigonometry, because let's face it, it's a grade 9 paper, and that stuff usually happens in grade 10. But 30, 60, 90 triangles are, I would say, fairly common when it comes to contests, that if you don't know about it, then you should probably learn about it. So here's, here's what it is. If I have, just in case you've never seen this before, if I have a right angle triangle, and the other two angles are 30 degrees and 60 degrees, the sides always have a predictable uh, ratio. It's one for the smallest side, the one off to the, off the 30 degrees, and then root three times that amount will be the side opposite the 60 degrees, and two will be the hypotenuse. Okay? I guess we also, we didn't have to use 30, 60, 90 so much as one and a one over two here. Could have gotten us the root three over two. So maybe, maybe you didn't need to know 30, 60, 90 triangles, but it certainly helps speed things up a little bit. Anyways, that is it for question number 23. I will see you in the next video for question 24. Until then, take care and have a wonderful day.